Hey data fans, Reed here. Today, I'm excited to walk you through a new feature for Power BI that was released last month in preview. Historically, we could use calculation groups to add dynamic format strings to calculations. Now, for each individual measure, we now have the ability to take those format strings that were previously only reserved for calculation groups and add them directly inside of the measure. Now, as you can see in front of you here, we actually have a table where there's a dynamic format string that auto scales the calculations and the formatting of those numbers up and down depending on the scale of the value. So we'll actually see how to implement something that another blogger, Kane Schneider, created to apply to this and see how it's done in Power BI Desktop. So let's go ahead and get started. So to start this video off, I will mention that I'm using a pattern that Kane Schneider actually created using calculation groups, and he's even been on my YouTube live streams before to showcase this. So the link to this blog post and the file to download the original pattern will be available in the video description below, but that is where I got this from, and I'm now using that in the new dynamic format string function. And within Power BI Desktop, depending on when you're watching this video, you may need to turn this preview feature on, and that's available under the File, Options, Settings here, and come on over to preview features, and you just wanna make sure that dynamic format strings for measures is turned on if you need to enable this. Let's go ahead and close the window here. And right now in this table over on the left, I actually have two calculations for sales and year over year sales variance, but notice that it's not displaying the original value. It's actually auto formatting it and scaling it up and down based off of if it's in the millions, the thousands, or even up to the billions and trillions scales. And it does that within this table. And the calculation or the format string itself is done in that individual measure. So if I select this over here, we can see that the DAX calculation is just pointing to the sales calculation. So I've created a separate version of this and I'll discuss more later why I've done that. But notice that under format, if you have that preview feature enabled, depending on the version you are in, you will have an option at the bottom for a dynamic. And that gives you an option over on the left to go from measure to format. Now this was something that was previously only exposed in calculation groups, but now per measure, we can create this. And again, this was a pattern that Kane Schneider built, and he actually built this as an enhancement on top of another post that another author, Jeff Weir, actually had created, but this one removes some complexities in terms of performance cost. I don't wanna to get too far down the rabbit hole in the description of what goes on into here, but essentially we have a couple of callouts that I'll point out. So there is a decimal places value that I will actually show you later how to use a what if parameter with, but basically it determines the length of characters and the number of digits of the value, determines which suffix will be placed here based off of the size of it, and the end result is basically a format string down below that will auto scale it to keep the numbers succinct and at a shorter length than the original value. Now I like this because in general with a table, I like to display the fewest numbers possible to communicate the data out because it makes the table less complex and less noisy when displaying that. And notice that even the tooltip is displaying this as well. So I had that applied to my sales, my prior year, and my year over year. Now the reason that I'm actually having separate calculations, if I can expand this out a little bit for any of the formatted prefixes versus the original sales calculation is that it does sometimes cause other visuals that automatically have their own scaled formatting. Now, if I was to try to come to the waterfall, add this into my y-axis, I'm starting to get some weird scaling issues because the formats between the visual, the one that's been automatically applied, and the one that's inside of the dynamic format string are somewhat conflicting with each other. Now, I've not found a way to resolve this yet, and instead, what I would recommend, at least for now, based on this video, is you have your base calculation, and then you have separate dynamic formatted ones that are more designed to be used in the matrix and the table visual because unfortunately today those native visuals do not have any auto scaling enabled. Now to carry this a step further, again go into that idea that the fewest number of characters possible to display or communicate those values, I would actually recommend coming over in this case to a report with no prefix, so no dollar symbol, and in this case I would encourage you to maybe rename the header for that particular measure to include the dollar sign take it out of the calculation entirely, and then just display the number on its own. So less information needed on rows. There's no reason necessarily to have a dollar sign on every row if the header indicates that this is in a dollar scale. So that has a slight variation where the format strings in here are still following the same pattern, but instead of having that dollar symbol down here that would have been in front of the numbers, it has since been removed, and the header itself is 
carrying over that information. So one other alternative approach to this. Now, last but not least, I want to show how to include a what if parameter. Coming over to here, notice that we have something for decimal places. If I change this to two and hit enter, we can see that the number of decimal places inside of these calculations actually changes. So what I have used is under modeling, I had created a what if parameter between the ranges of one to five, put that into the model, and then all of these are actually referencing that here at the top. We go back to format, and you can see that the decimal place value, which is coming from that what if parameter here, that's actually feeding this format string to determine how many decimal places I would like to display. So you can give your users the ability to automatically adjust that using the single value slicer and the included what if parameter in the model. And the final takeaway that I'll say with this is I have included some really cool functions in here to create a really nice scalable format string. You can also just type in your own custom formatting as well. So any of the typical formatting that you have typed in Excel can also be applied here if you want to go for something more straightforward and simple. But you have the kingdom as your option to really put any kind of DAX logic that used to be reserved for calculation groups in individual measures in this case. But overall, I'm hoping this gives you an idea of some of the cool possibilities that you have with format strings. Really think of it as more of a model level calculation that can be done in a calc group. But the problem is you apply a calc group to a visual, all of the calculations inside of there will get that string applied unless you, again, add a whole bunch of if statements and logic to your calculation group. So we've been able to take that custom format string that was reserved for those, and we can now put it inside of single measures now. So hopefully this is something you find useful. If you have any suggestions, comments, or ideas, drop them into the comment section below. Otherwise, feel free to check out some of our related content. And otherwise, I will see you in our next video.